Hey there, Nick Lee here with Pragmatic Works, coming at you again with another video all about Power BI. And in this time, we're gonna be talking about using your semantic model that you're connecting to in Power BI, but maybe making changes to it or even adding more data sources to it instead of being locked down to just what's in it. Now your semantic model may be the single source of truth in a lot of cases, but in this scenario, we're using that single source of truth that we're already looking at and adding to it. We're not taking away anything, we are simply adding to it. So let's walk through it together. Before we begin, want to learn more about Power BI? Visit prag.works slash nick40 and you'll get a 40% discount on an annual on-demand learning subscription and you'll get access to over 100 courses. Now onto the video. So here I am in Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my semantic model that lives in the cloud. I'm gonna do so by going to Get Data. I'm gonna choose Power BI Semantic Models, and I'm gonna choose from a list of semantic models that I have available to me. The model that I'm gonna choose is the one that's called Report Usage Metrics Model here, and I'm gonna hit Connect. And once I connect to this data source, now I have a live connection to this data source that is in the cloud called a semantic model. What this live connection means is now that I'm connecting to a data source that's already made, I don't need to configure any refreshes. I don't need to make any changes to this data set. If, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. I can't create new calculated columns. I can't modify relationships. As you can see, I don't even have a table view on the left side. If I look at the model view here, I could see relationships that already exist between different tables. And as you can tell, everything's grayed out. I can't modify them whatsoever. All right, so this is, a, this is a live connection to this data set that already lives in the cloud. So that being said, now I want to add more to this report. So when I wanna add more to this report, I wanna add another data set that I have. And in this case, I wanna load a table that I have stored locally on my machine. And when I do that, that's going to create what is called a composite model. Well, you might be thinking, Nick, I thought composite models can only be made using direct query. Well, you're absolutely correct. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this live connection to our semantic model into a direct query to our semantic model. If you wanna know more information about direct query and about composite models and what they could do, make sure to check out our video called What You Need to Know About Direct Query. Let's go ahead and make this a direct query now instead of a live connection. So how are we gonna do that? Well. Let's go ahead and try to connect to our other data source that we have. So I'm gonna to go to get data and I'm gonna choose text CSV file that I currently have. And it's saying a direct query connection is required. To make changes to your model, like renaming columns and adding data from multiple sources, you'll need to switch to direct query connection. This requires adding a local model to your file and is a permanent change. So that's okay, it's not messing up the underlying semantic model. What it is saying, this is a permanent change. I'm no longer going to be necessarily a live connection to a semantic model that already exists. I'm gonna be having a direct query connection, which is more of a local model. So I'm gonna hit this add local model button. And here it's saying, okay, it's basically reestablishing a connection to our database where our, our semantic model is stored. And I'm gonna say, I wanna keep all of this stuff that I already have loaded. I'm not gonna exclude anything from this data model. And now it's asking me, all right, well, which data set do I want to connect to now for my, my CSV file? I'm going to choose report data. This is the one I want to connect to. And this is exactly what I was looking for here. So this is, again, just a preview of the data that exists in this, uh, in this file that I've connected to. And it looks good. I don't need to make any transforms on it. But I could if I wanted to. Here it's saying a potential security risk when you're adding a second data source, when you're already using direct query, so on and so forth. This is just some security settings. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. All right, now that I have this loaded, I can now notice that we have some new buttons on the left side, some new tabs here. I have table view now, which didn't exist before. And the only thing I'm able to view is this one table that I have that's called report data. If I try to look at my others, notice that I can't view them because all of these are direct query connections to our to our semantic model. And with this one that's called report data specifically, this one is an import. So we have this composite model here. We have some direct query. We have some import. Now, if I look at the relationship view, if I scroll out a little bit here, 
Notice that I have this new table called report data. Notice it also doesn't have this little blue line on the top of it. All of our original data that we connected to with a live connection to a live data set that already exists has that blue line as a marker on the top indicating that it, that it is or was a live connection. So in this case, the report data is not a live connection. So it is plain and it is just white, nothing special to it. But what I could do now is I can actually build a relationship from this table to our previously established data model. And remember, I still can't modify, even though this is a direct query now, not a, not a live connection, I still can't modify this relationship that exists. It's grayed out, but I can create a new one. So if I drag and drop display name to display name on the report section here, uh, notice that, well, first it says it's a many to many relationship, but in this case, that's fine. I don't care if it is or not. Just for example purposes here. And if I go back to my report view, now I could build data based off of these two individual tables. Even though they're disparate data sources, one of them's direct query, one of them's import, we have a composite model here and it still works. So if I look at my reports table and I drop in display name, this is the one that's coming from our semantic model itself that's in the Power BI service. And I also add in, let's do maybe a count of report ID. We could see, if I make this a little bit bigger, there we go. Now we see this relationship is now working on these disparate data sources, one of them being a live connection turned to direct query and one of them being an imported data set. So this is awesome. This works great, exactly as we intended it to. And I'm very happy with the result here. Notice that also there's more that we can even do with this. Since we've converted it from a semantic model to a direct query connection, now we can also do more things with it, such as creating calculated columns. So for instance, just as an example here, I'm gonna come up with something off the top of my head. So the reports table, this is one that actually came from the uh, semantic model itself. If I right click on it, I have options to create new measures and create new columns and whatnot. This type of functionality is not there when you have a semantic model. But since I've converted this to direct query, I could do this now. I could choose new column and I could, I could put maybe a flag column, column on here and I could say is failed banks equals and I could say if contains string of display name and I could say if it finds the word failed banks put a one otherwise put a zero or maybe maybe put a two instead how about that now I have this new calculated column in my reports table that's coming from our semantic model and if I add this to my table Notice it works. It absolutely works. So it's awesome. It's great. We now have this semantic model that we had. We converted it to a direct query. We could import more data sources. We could even make it disparate data sources from import uh, and direct query. So it's now a composite model. We could run refreshes on this. So what you could do now is publish this to the cloud. You can configure a refresh just for that one imported data set. You can uh, also maintain that direct query functionality that is living within the semantic model, and it's all gonna work absolutely seamlessly. If you're trying to convert your semantic model to a direct query and it's not working for you, make sure that you have this setting enabled in your admin settings. And if you're not an admin, make sure you reach out and request this option to be available. It's called Allow Direct Query Connections to Power BI Semantic Models. Thanks for tuning in on this video on how to use a semantic model in a direct query, basically turning it into a composite model, adding more data sources to it, uh, being able to do import and direct query at the same time, being able to modify or add columns or add measures to an existing semantic model that exists in the cloud. I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you tune back in for some more.